In this video we're going to be adding visuals and a camera to the game. Uh, so not only are we going to add a skeletal mesh which is the actual physical viewing of the cr of the pawn, the, the thing that the player controls, and also that it could also be the bots as well or the AI. Um, but we're on top of that we're going to create a camera so that we can view the pawn from a third person view. It's a little different of a camera. I mean there's a million ways you can make a third person camera so we're just going to kind of go with one that um, allows the it allows the pawn to actually rotate on its own without having the camera rotate with it. So uh, to get started we're going to go inside of our Puzz Pawn class and we're going to add an object to that class. To add an object you go into default properties and this is kind of a static way to do it and what you do is you do begin object class skeletal mesh component and we're going to name it Puzz Skeletal Mesh Component. Skeletal Mesh Component is a class inside of Engine if you want to go back and look and there's a lot of variables inside of that as well as the parent classes of Skeletal Mesh Component that you can change and manipulate to make the Skeletal Mesh uh, act differently in certain situations or accept certain lights, cast shadows, things like that. Um, now the begin object is basically saying we are going to uh, start an object. It also is how we edit an object that already exists as well. Class is used to, to say what kind of object we're going to begin. Now if we didn't put class there, if we just had name, um, that would mean that the object already exists and we're just going to reopen it and make changes to it. Uh, you'll notice that we do that later in the, um, in the videos. Now skeletal mesh is obviously the actual mesh, the actual visual thing. The component is just something we attach to the, to the class. So inside the component we add, we add a skeletal mesh and the skeletal mesh will be of class content that skeletal mesh that demo robo and all this is is saying where to look for uh, this skeletal mesh inside of our content um, that we have. Then we show, then we have an end object which means we are no longer making any more changes to the skeletal mesh component. And then we set mesh equals puzz skeletal mesh component. Mesh actually is something a variable created that holds um, a skeletal mesh component and it allows you to make changes to the skeletal mesh component on the fly in a dynamic way. Um, so this actually attaches it to it statically but then the mesh allows you to change it dynamically. We set the mesh equal to this actual object so that we can make those changes. And then finally we have components.add puzz skeletal mesh component and what that does is that just finally attaches this object to the pawn. Uh, that is very important to have at the end if the object hasn't already been attached in some previous uh, child or in some previous parent class. Once that's done, um, that will if you were to load the game, you would probably uh, see the skeletal mesh if you look down, or if depending on where your camera is at the moment, you might actually see it like looking through it. It just depends on where your camera is located. So let's go ahead and make a camera now so we can see this skeletal mesh, this pawn, without any more problems. So first we're going to go inside of our Puzz Player Controller, and our Player Controller is what holds our camera class. Uh, this variable is probably created inside of Player Controller if you were to look back in, into the Engine folder in the source files. So camera class is going to equal class puzzle game .puzz camera, and that is also the class we're going to be creating, which is called Puzz Camera. So you can save and close this once you have that in there. Then we're going to go to Puzz Camera. Inside Puzz Camera, we have a vector, which is a XYZ coordinate in space, and that's going to be our offset. So that's how far away we're going to push the camera away from the player. Then we have function update view target, which is a function inside of camera, and we're going to over we're going to overwrite it by removing pretty much everything that existed before because we're not going to use that super uh, uh, keyword that allows us to use that code from the previous function. We're going to create a local vector hit location and hit normal which is for a trace down here. We'll get to that in a second. We're going to have an if statement that's just pretty much making sure that the camera is what in the situation we want it in. Um, you're more than welcome to backtrack and look at how, why this was used. Uh, it, you know, For instance if the um, out view target is equal to the view target you obviously don't need to uh, you know, continuously reset the update view target and so on and so forth. So we're going to scroll down to um, the next area and it's where we're going to set the location of the camera to the location of the pawn. Um, out VT 
which is the target view target, is um, going to be what we use mostly in this in the camera class right now. So outvt.pov, which is the point of view of the location. So the 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 area the point of view is basically the camera's location. The target is basically the pawn because the pawn is going to be what we're looking for. So outvt.camera, so to speak, dot location is equal to the target location. Now if we just did that, then what would happen is you would pretty much get what you already have. So we want to push the camera away. So what we do is we add our vector offset to it and we push it away. Down below in default properties we set our offset to x400 y0 z300 x is kind of forward and back y is left and right and z is up and down so if you um, wanted to adjust this in some other way to make it more what you're looking for then you're more than welcome to do it if you wanted some sort of like over the shoulder camera you would pretty much adjust the y a little bit and not so much the x um, maybe the z a little less too and then that will uh, make it kind of like over the shoulder um, so you can experiment and see where you can move this camera around. Obviously there's a million ways to do a third person camera. Uh, this one, like I said, the pawn does not change or does not, does not rotate the camera. So um, you would obviously need to experiment also with the rotation if you wanted to make the pawn as the pawn rotates, so does the camera. Um, okay, so next we're going to also we're going to mess with the actual rotation of the camera. So how, how is though though the camera might be all the way up here in this area in space, we want to make sure the camera is actually staring at the player or the pawn. So we're going to set the rotation of the camera by make, creating the location of the player, subtracting that from the from the actual location of the camera, and then turning that into a rotator. So it's it's basically finding that distance difference and then rotating the camera to look down at the pawn. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a trace. Uh, now a trace is kind of shooting something out in space and seeing if we hit it. Uh, it's kind of like an imaginary bullet. Now um, what we're going to say is is if the camera hits something so to speak, so not so much at this imaginary bullet, but if a camera touches it then what we want is we want the camera to not go through the wall. If we didn't put this trace, cameras don't have a collision, so they're just going to go right through the wall, so you'll be staring through a wall, or even worse, you'll be looking in the wall, and you won't see anything else. So we're going to put this, this trace in there to push the camera downward so it doesn't go through the wall. Hit location is what gets returned uh, for where the camera actually makes its first initial touch. So we're going to go ahead and set the location to the hit location. Um, as for the parameters being passed in, you're more than welcome to take a look and see uh, you know, um, what each parameter does. You can find the trace uh, function originally created inside the actor class. Now the outvt.pov location then will be reset. It will no longer be set to the location of the pawn, but actually just to the hit location. So it kind of pushes there. Now this gets ticked every second. So it will constantly be updated as we run through this uh, you know update view target if you wanted to test that you could put a log in here and you would see in your log that it would be filling up the entire log with you know whatever you decided to say and then also we need to update our rotation again because now that our location is different we want to make sure that the rotator doesn't go funny on us and so we just re we just put that back in so it kind of resets that rotation um, and makes it so we're still pointing at the pawn and that completes this tutorial or this uh, video and if you were to um, run this game right now you would see firsthand the pawn uh, at a certain distance and then he would just move around like so